Taurus and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and today we'll be talking all about watercolor papers. So you're at the art store, you're buying supplies, you're looking to buy maybe your first watercolor paper and you see papers with all sorts of different labels and names like hot press, cold press, HP, CP. What does all this mean and what is the difference? If you're asking yourself all these questions, this video is for you because we'll be talking all about the differences as well as the pros and cons of each of these different types of papers. And hopefully this video will help you figure out which one you wanna try next. So hot press and cold press. If you only spend five minutes on this video, the big takeaway here is the texture. So when paper is manufactured, one of the last steps in the process is for it to run through rollers, kind of like a big rolling pin. Um, and these rollers can either be heated to a hot temperature or left cold. Paper that gets pressed through hot rollers gets kind of ironed down to like a smooth texture. And that's known as hot pressed paper. On the other hand, paper that's passed through cold rollers doesn't get that ironing out effect. So the paper stays bumpy and textured and kind of crinkly on the surface. So why does that matter? Well, cold press paper is cottony and a lot more absorbent. So this means that if you like to work with a lot of water, AKA like wet on wet painting, it's going to soak up a lot of that water and is a lot less prone to blooming or buckling or warping when you actually add the water onto it. And I think that cold press is actually quite easy to use, which makes it one of the most popular types of watercolor paper. And I think it's a great starting point for beginners because it's so much easier to use. Now, because it has a lot of texture though, that texture will be imprinted and highlighted in your art, which could be either a desirable thing or not, depending on you know, your style, your preferences, and your subject matter. Now, hot press paper, on the other hand, is smooth and has very little grain to it. So if you're someone who has a very precise or intricate style of watercolor, it's good at showing a high level of brush detail. And I think that it allows your artwork to be scanned and reproduced without that bumpy texture to it. Um, however, the downside is that it doesn't absorb water as well as cold press. So you have to be a little bit more skilled to know how to work with it. And so sometimes hot press paper gets a bad rep because um, it does require a little bit of that, that learning curve to know how to handle it. So the outcome of your work on these two surfaces will look slightly different, but honestly, there's no better paper or worse paper, or um, there's no right or wrong way either. I think a lot of it depends on, you know, personal preference. So like I mentioned before, you know, it can have a lot to do with your style and maybe the subject matter that you're painting. Like if you're doing expressive wet on wet painting with lots of color washes and gradations and you want that artistic, textured, um, looser, you know, type of painting, cold press paper might be the perfect match for you. However, on the other hand, if you're, you know, a botanical illustrator or maybe a fashion illustrator who does tighter paintings and you know you want more intricate brushwork and you know you don't want to use all that much water for example you might appreciate the amount of control that you have on a hot press paper so to recap here are some of the pros and cons starting with cold press so the pros of cold press paper are that it is easy to use in my opinion um, it has an artsy texture you can use a lot of water it's great for washes and gradations and some of the cons are that bumpier does mean that it's a little harder for detail work and that the texture becomes a part of the finished look of your painting. And then for a hot press paper, some of the pros of this paper are that it's great for detail work, it scans without texture, it's versatile and can be used for mixed medium, and colors tend to be slightly more vivid on hot press paper. And then some of the cons are that it doesn't retain water as well and that it requires a higher skill level. Okay, and last but not least, let me give you some recommendations for some of my favorite hot and cold press papers in case you're in the market for some really great quality options. So starting with hot press paper first, the creme de la creme, in my opinion, is Arches hot press paper. This is a terrific quality paper. It's sold in blocks, so that means that the sides are all glued down. 
which makes actually painting on it so much easier because the paper is not going to buckle on you. And for artists who are, you know, on the fence about, you know, whether or not to spend on a quality paper or not, go the extra mile because I often get people asking me why their paints aren't performing well and why things are looking, you know, not as vivid and bright. And I think that the paper can have a huge impact on, um, you know, how your paints are performing. And I can definitely see that sometimes if I go for a cheaper or, you know, a more economical paper that's, you know, not as good quality, that, you know, the, the, the way my paints um, perform on that surface is, is definitely not the same. So you, you are giving yourself a harder job um, if you're opting for something that is not gonna handle the paints as well. My second recommendation as far as hot press papers go is from a company called Legion. And this paper is called Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. This paper has been really impressive. I have always been like a, a very, you know, um, <laughs> gung-ho arches fan, but recently the Stonehenge Aqua has really given this other paper a run for its money because first of all, it's very economical. So it's much cheaper than the arches. Um, and also I think that what's really interesting is that the colors seem to really pop off this paper. So if you like very vibrant colors that don't fade as the paint dries, this paper will really deliver as far as being able to retain that saturation, that pop of color that you have um, from when the paint is still wet to when it dries on the surface of the paper. So definitely recommend both of these options um, if you're looking and if you're in the market for a good quality hot press paper. So moving on to cold press paper, my first recommendation here for the top of the line is going to be Arches cold press paper. And so whereas the hot press paper came with a pink cover, the cold press paper comes in a green cover. And that's how you're gonna tell them apart when you're shopping for it in the store. And so the cold press paper itself has a lot of grain on, on the texture of the paper. It has nearly like a stucco or eggshell-y kind of um, texture that just is really, really beautiful. And um, if you're into that and you really love, you know, that textural effect and a paper that can really handle a lot of water, then this one is definitely one to try because I think that it just performs so beautifully. Um, so that is that option. Then moving down the price bracket a little bit to something a bit more economical. Um, this is a paper that is also, you know, the counterpart of the hot press paper that I showed you earlier, which is Stonehenge Aqua's cold press. So the big difference, in my opinion, between the Stonehenge Aqua and the um, arches is that, in my opinion, the Stonehenge Aqua has less of a texture on it. And I think that maybe it doesn't perform quite as well. So if you know, the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press and the um, Arches Hot Press to me are very, very close in performance level. I think that the Stonehenge um, Cold Press versus the Arches Cold Press, I'll try to get them out, um, I think that this one has a bit of a, a steeper drop in terms of quality than the Arches Cold Press, which to me is just an incredible quality paper. Um, so, which is not to say that it's, you know, not, not one to try, but um, you know, from what I've experienced with it, it's more of an economical option. And then last but not least, this is going to be the dark horse of watercolor paper recommendations. And this is a obscure company that I had never heard of before until I watched some YouTube videos and um, saw some reviews from other artists online. And it's from a company called Bao Hong. And it's, um, the actual name of the pad is the Academy Watercolor Paper Pad. And let me tell you that I was very skeptical when I, when I heard about this. And I was like, let's take it with a grain of salt. You know, you can buy it on Amazon. It's um, very inexpensive, relatively speaking, when you're talking about, you know, cold press papers. Um, but I got it, I tried it, and I was hooked. It is absolutely fantastic. So the paper is toothy and grainy and has um, a similar amount of grain to the Arches cold press paper. However, the texture is unique to this particular paper. Um, in terms of how the paint goes on, it is just an incredible experience. Um, the paper absorbs water very easily, the color pops, and it's just a joy to work with this paper. So needless to say, I highly, highly recommend this one, or at least trying it, because um, for how much it is, it's a terrific value, and 
I mean, it's, it's become my favorite. So um, definitely recommend this. And I'm gonna put all the links to all of these in the description below so you can check them all out and see you know, if you're interested in trying any of them. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you a little bit more clarity for what to look out for maybe next time you're at your local art store and you're shopping for you know, watercolor papers um, so that you understand maybe the you know, intrinsic qualities that exist between hot press papers and cold press papers so you can choose the right paper for your next project. As always, thank you so much for watching and joining me every week and I'll see you next time.